Hi everyone, welcome to video 5G, and in this video we're going to be talking about applications of the trigonometric functions that we've been exploring in the last quiz. Um, we're going to be talking about how sine, cosine, and tangent are used in uh, real world examples of uh, trigonometry and um, problems like word problems. So the first thing we need to do is to identify a few new vocabulary words. And the first one is the angle of elevation. And in trigonometric applications, the angle of elevation is the angle above the horizontal that an observer must look up to see an object. So as we're looking at that definition, I want to just emphasize, of course, elevation is above and up. Those are the two words that remind you of elevation. So as we look at a diagram that might go with this definition. We need to imagine a person that is down on the ground and is sighting something high in the air. So here's my person. I am not an art teacher, keep in mind. Um, and here's the thing up in the air. Let's say it's a balloon. And what we're going to be doing is saying that the um, horizontal will be a line that is going to be parallel to the ground and the angle of elevation will be the angle between that horizontal and the line of sight up to the object that they're looking at. So this angle right here is what we're going to call the angle of elevation. That's our first definition. Our second one is similar to it Instead of angle of elevation, we're going to have angle of depression. And the definition is also very similar to the angle of elevation's definition. And it is the angle, you can guess, I think, below the horizontal. that an observer this time must look down to see an object. And again, it's a depression angle, so it makes sense that we're using the words below and down in that definition, I hope. As for the picture for this, we can imagine a person high up on something, let's say it's like a cliff of some sort, and the person is up there doing their thing. And let's say that the cliff is above some water, and so we have a ship somewhere out in the distance, and the person is going to be from the horizontal which is a line that is parallel to the ground or in this case the surface of the water the angle between that horizontal and a person's line of sight to an object that is below that is going to be my angle of depression Okay, so it's again the angle that's below the horizontal that the observer needs to look down in order to see an object. So I hope that you can see here as we have our angle of elevation and our angle of depression, they're all categorized as angles uh, between a horizontal line 
and the line of sight. So if we thought of our line of sight kind of coming down like this, then we could say in one complete diagram that this angle up here is looking down, so that's my angle of depression, and this angle right here is looking up along that same line of sight, and that is my elevation. So it's important for you to realize, and I'll just have you write this over in the margin here next to these terms, it's really important for you to realize that these two definitions, they refer to different angles, but they themselves, because they are, as you saw in that diagram we just created, they're alternate interior angles between parallel lines. So these are always going to be congruent. And that's an important feature to remember as we start working with our diagrams today. Okay, so then we're going to go on to example one as we're looking at an, um, a, a word problem that applies to our trig functions here. In the example one that is given to you is an airplane is flying at a height of two miles above ground. The angle of depression from the airplane to the base of a maple tree is 15 degrees. How far must the plane fly in order to be directly above the tree? So I think as we start making this, um, we'll leave angle of depression there at the top of the screen so we can see what kind of picture we're going to need. Um, whenever you have an application problem, you always want to start by sketching a diagram. And I actually have a picture here that I can grab and pull over for us so that we can see exactly what is happening. So you can see we have our um, our airplane up here and it is two miles completely above the ground and that is a completely vertical distance that's measured. Then we're told that there's an angle of depression and you can see the angle of depression labeled as 15 degrees and here's our maple tree and we basically are trying to figure out what this bottom number and that's our unknown and that's the distance that the airplane needs to fly in order for the airplane to be right directly above the tree there. So that's what we want to solve for and as you can already see they've relabeled not only the angle of depression but they've said because of alternate interior angles like we were just talking about over here um, what we need to talk about is that this angle down in the corner is also 15 degrees because the angle of depression is always equal to the angle of elevation. So now what I need to do is I need to start identifying what of my picture here um, is going to create my trig ratio. And so if I'm putting myself down here at the maple tree and I use this bottom triangle right here um, for the trig ratio to set it up, then our two miles is the side that is opposite that angle. And our x, which is unknown, is my adjacent to that angle. And so, well, first off, I want you to realize that this diagram here may not be exactly to scale. Not drawn to scale. NDTS is what that means there. Um, so as I set up my opposite over my adjacent, we think of Sakatoa. Um, and we definitely are going to land with our tangent ratio. So our tangent of 15 degrees here is going to be equal to our opposite, which is 2 miles, over our adjacent, and that happens to be our unknown. So remember, tangent, over, tangent of 15 degrees we can put over 1, and we can go ahead and cross-multiply to solve this uh, rest of this problem out. So x is going to be times the tangent of 15 degrees and that will equal just 1 times 2 or 2 and then to get x alone I'm going to divide by that tangent of 15 degrees on both sides. So if I have x alone x is going to be equal to 2 over the tangent of 15 degrees 
And if we use our calculator and our tangent function there, uh, we can get an approximation of 7.5. And I just want to remind you that because we are dealing with an application problem, whenever you get to the end of an application problem, you want to make sure that we're going to change this to 7.5 and then make sure we attach units there. So 7.5 miles is our final answer, and don't forget your units. So that's the end of that problem, the first example with an application for right triangle trigonometry. And we'll go on to the next on the back um, in just a second. But take a pause in, in your video here. Pause and reflect. Remember, make sure that your learning is on par. And um, make sure that you are able to not only sketch the diagram, but follow the, uh, the ratios of the trig ratios through to the answer. All right, here's another example that you might encounter a problem something like this. Um, this example, too, says from the top of a building, an observer sights the top of a radio tower that is taller than the building at a 62 degree angle of elevation and sights the base of the radio tower at a 34 degree angle of depression. The question is, if the building and the tower are 100 meters apart, how tall is the tower? So we need to find the height of the tower. So we can sketch a picture and we want to make sure we have a building with a person standing on the top and a radio tower next to it that is a little bit taller than the building and so this is what we have going on here and I'll just remind you that this drawing is probably not drawn to scale so just keep that in mind. And we are going to as you can see here, um, as we're drawing the picture, we have an angle of elevation of 62 degrees that we've got right here, and an, a separate angle of depression all being sighted from the same observer on the top of the building. So hopefully you can see that that's going to give us two separate right triangles. And just make a note of that. And so that means we have, because we have two different right triangles, we are going to have two separate calculations on this problem. And then once we find the two separate calculations, which we'll say are, uh, let's say, this height here, so x sub 1 is the height from um, the top of the building to the top of the tower, and x sub 2 is the height from the top of the building down to the base of the tower. And what we're basically going to do is after we find our two separate calculations, we are going to then add those two calculations. So essentially we're adding x sub 1 and x sub 2 together. Okay, so then let's go ahead and start labeling this triangle. Um, again, we're going to have x2 here is an opposite as well as x1 is an opposite when we are referencing the angles over here. Those are going to be opposites. We're also going to be able to label our adjacent, which actually is the adjacent for both triangle angles there. Um, so as we think about what that distance is, hopefully you can see that the distance from the top of the building straight over to the tower is the same as the distance along the ground from the base of the building over to the base of the tower. So then that's going to be a hundred meters and you can see um, that that's going to be our adjacent for both triangles. So let's say I'm going to call this triangle on the top, we'll call that triangle A and this is triangle B on the bottom. And so if I'm talking about calculations for triangle A first, we're going to look at the ratio that is given. And again, we have opposite and we have adjacent. And so O and A come from Sakatoa, which is tangent. So for triangle A, we're going to have tangent. And if we are using triangle A, that means we're using the 62 degree angle of elevation. 
and the unknown is x1 in that triangle over our 100 meter distance between the two pieces. And very easily we can cross multiply here. We get that x1 is going to be 100 times tangent of 62 degrees. And with my calculator I'm going to add those up and I get 188.1 meters. Then we also need to do a separate calculation for triangle B. And with triangle B, again, we have opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be tangent again of 34 degrees this time is going to equal this time x2, that bottom piece of the height of the tower, over 100 again. That distance doesn't change. Then we have x2 equals 100 times tangent of 34 if we just cross multiply and get that x2 alone and our x is going to be approximately equal to on this side 67.5 meters and I'll just remind you this is the reason I said this diagram is probably not drawn to scale you can see that the angle 34 here looks bigger than the 62 but it really doesn't matter what the diagram looks like. Again, we're letting the numbers speak for themselves. So once I have those two separate answers, I'm going to merge them together and I'm going to add up 188.1 and 67.5 and my final answer here for this example will be 255.6 and then don't forget of course we want to make sure we have our units attached so 255.6 meters is how we're going to end this problem. So that looked really difficult even though um, it had two different triangles. We, all we have to do is just kind of separate the pieces and pull the diagram apart. Don't panic on problems like that. Um, just take it one step at a time and you guys will be good. Um, the last piece of your whisk today is a question uh, about a ladder leaning against a house. So remember your strategy to, should be to sketch a picture first and to figure out, put the labels on the diagram that you need to, and then figure out what trig ratio you're going to be using to uh, find the unknown in that problem. So I'll go ahead and uh, let you finish off with that question, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.